ask all of you to witness the launch of the report itself. And if you look at the screen, that is a, a few screen grabs from uh, the book itself, the report itself. Yes, if uh, my people at uh, the audiovisual, we can just get back to the room. Uh, the governor is uh, presenting uh, a copy of that report, uh, the re physical copy of the report itself, to the CS. A big round of applause. Yes, good after tea. Um, uh, this morning, I want to learn you through the report that uh, has just been launched by the CS. And um, I'll actually not take a lot of time. Maybe in the next like uh, 20 minutes, I'll actually be done. So the outline of the presentation is, is uh, reflected there. We'll give a small background, discuss the methodology, uh, then look at uh, the county statistics as we got them. Uh, look at some dimensions in terms of the access and exclusions, uh, the quality impact, and uh, we'll just have to go through one case study, that's Mombasa, it has been picked at Radom, and then we'll have some conclusions. My name is Robert Derito, as has been mentioned, uh, Director in Charge of Production Statistics from KNBS, so I'm not McDonald George Budo, but I'm representing him here. So in terms of the background, uh, it has already been mentioned that uh, one of the main reasons why we carry out um, fin access service, it is basically to monitor the developments and uh, also have a better understanding of what has been happening within the financial landscape. And the very first study in Kenya was actually carried out back in 2006. Uh, so the 2021 is the sixth uh, study and it has already been mentioned that uh, we have expanded this to the county level because the previous five studies, we are mainly focusing on the national level um, data, but uh, in the 2021, uh, there are those, you know, the expansion that was made to now cover the counties. And the four dimensions have been uh, considered in all the studies, that is success usage, quality, and also the impact. Uh, of the financial uh, sector in terms of how people have been accessing uh, these financial services and also the related products. Um, the 2021 FinAccess, uh, again, was a joint venture between uh, the CBK, FSD, and uh, other stakeholders, and also KMBS, and we continue appreciating the good you know, relationship, working relationship that uh, we've been having. Uh, the basic report was actually launched last year in December 2021, and uh, we are now here to continue with uh, further analysis to present the county level statistics. In terms of the methodology, um, the survey was designed in such a way that it would uh, give us estimates at the national level, Lulo urban, as well as all the 47 counties. And um, the Bureau maintains a statistical sampling frame that is actually good enough to give us estimates at the county level. And uh, depending again on the level of design, it's also possible for us to get estimates even at the sub-county level. Uh, in total, we had selected over 30,000 households, but the households that we found to be eligible were over 25,000. And out of those, when we posed the questions, uh, we actually received, you know, responses from about 85.6%. The target population was anyone within those households who was aged 16 years and above, although the analysis focuses on the 18 years plus. So in this case, this was a, uh, a we used the stratified sampling 
uh, it was a moot stage, meaning that the results that we have are actually really reliable. So just as a recap, because this might have been presented earlier, when we look at um, the access in terms of um, at the national level, uh, the totality was about 3.7. And um, this has actually listened uh, from the 26, I believe, 0.7 that had been monitored way back in 2006. And uh, when we look at uh, the population that is excluded, that was about 11.6%. Um, and uh, the overall access, that's both in the formal and the informal, was about 88.4%. We have a chart there. I don't know what is uh, happening to... Yeah, maybe the team back there should actually focus on the presentation. Thank you. Uh, so if you look at the chart down here, we've tried actually to give the levels of uh, you know, access uh, all the way from 2006 to 2021. In terms of uh, the formal prudential, that's the, basically the banks. We have the formal non-prudential when you look at um, the mobile money. Then we also have the formal registered in terms of the people who gain access through other formally registered you know, entities. And we also have the informal as well as the ex excluded. So in this case, we have this information and also find it in your uh, book that has just been uh, presented. Now, if we are to then focus on the county level information, we are doing this because of two reasons. One, um, when uh, we got the new constitution, it has actually become necessary for us to disaggregate the information at the county level for the purposes of planning and decision making at that level. Meaning that like now when we look at what we had presented, if I tell you that uh, the access starts at 8.3.7%, that will only be at the national level, yeah? But uh, that information may not be very useful to actually you know, do planning at the lower level. So that disaggregation then becomes very important. But at the same time, it's also very important for us to ensure that um, we provide uh, statistics that would be useful at that county level. Um, the overall figure actually hides a lot of uh, you know, variation. But it wouldn't give the exact story, especially when it comes now to the counties. And therefore, by disaggregating this information, it is then possible for you to actually come up with a county-specific product that uh, would actually then help to improve in terms of uh, you know, the financial inclusivity at the county level in this case. So it is important then for us to have information at that level. Uh, focusing on uh, the formal access, if we are to look at uh, what has been happening, uh, or rather from what we got from the data, nationally we had the 80, sorry, the 83.7 percent as uh, you know the population aged 18 years and above that could. Uh, that was gaining this access. But uh, looking at the distribution across the counties, it actually aged from 95% in uh, Nairobi, and uh, it was actually lowest at West Pokot at 57.7%. Um, and uh, one other thing that probably you could note from that chart is that uh, we have some few counties, Nairobi, uh, Nyeri, Muranga, Kirinyaga, um, and Kiabu also, uh, that had over 90% of uh, the adults aged 18 years and above actually uh, gaining this form of access. So in this case, um, when again we look at some of the counties like uh, West Pokot, uh, Trukana, and also Garissa, these were actually the lowest that could uh, you know, indicate that we are gaining uh, this form of access um, at uh, those percentages. That's West Pokot at 57.7% at Rukana 6.3, and Garissa at uh, 60.7. Um, the funniest thing is that uh, when you look at the data, I don't know why this isn't moving, uh, there is uh, the gender disparity again. Um, if you look at uh, a county like Kirifi, uh, the males 
about 84% of them uh, have access to these formal you know, services. But again, when you look at the females, it's about 66%. Uh, this slide, what it is basically giving is that gender gap in terms of uh, access. So uh, as much as yes, we may argue that uh, we have uh, like it 3.7% nationally, when you disaggregate th that by gender, you realize that there's actually that gap. And uh, this slide actually presents the 10, you know, top uh, counties that we realize that there is that huge gender gap in terms of, uh, you know, the formal access to formal uh, financial products and services. And uh, when you look at a county like Narok, there's a 17% difference uh, between the male and female. If you look at um, Kware, it's about 16% meaning that uh, uh, this information, once you get into the various counties, uh, it is actually possible to come up with you know, gender-specific you know, yeah, products that will actually help first to bridge in the gap. And of course, in the process, it also uh, enhance the access to these products and services. Uh, focusing just a bit on uh, the informal access, overall, nationally, we had about 4.7% of that population aged 18 years and above that uh, indicated that uh, they were getting this informal access, be it the shamans and the like. And um, focusing again on, uh, sorry, focusing again on uh, these counties, a uh, county like West Pokot indicated that about 29% of the population uh, were actually accessing these informal uh, services. But at the same time, we also have the population that is excluded. Overall, 11.7% uh, of that adult population, 18 plus, um, indicated that they were excluded. In this case, either you know, they were totally excluded, or probably they could only get maybe the services through their friends, social networks, and the like, but not either formal or informal in this case. And uh, a county like Agarisa, about 34.3% of that population, 18 plus, we actually excluded. So you'll find a lot of useful information once you get into the details of that report. Uh, focusing just a bit on uh, the usage, um, we focused on uh, the usage at the bank level. Uh, that is in including the mobile banking. We also looked at uh, now the banks separately without, you know, uh, focusing on that mobile banking, and then maybe the population that had, you know, mobile money accounts. And uh, just briefly, yeah, nationally, in terms of the people who are getting, uh, you know, who are using the bank services, including now the mobile money, that was about 44.1%. But uh, it was actually highest in Nairobi at 71.6%. At the lowest in Garissa at 3.8%. So there's actually that huge you know, disparity in terms of the usage you know, of the banking services when you look at the counties. Uh, if uh, we look at the banks alone, uh, the national average was about 23.8%. And uh, focusing on uh, Nairobi again, uh, the population 18 plus that uh, uses banks, uh, that was about 44 0.6%. Uh, if I look at uh, the mobile money accounts, uh, at the national average, it's 1.4% of the population, 18 plus again, has you know those mobile bank accounts, um, with the highest being again at Nairobi at 93.9%, and the lowest at uh, West Pokot at 54.5%. Uh, uh, again, if you had to focus on uh, the different forms in terms of uh, the usage, I'll just take just one example, like Transoia as an example, that has about 49.1% of the formal you know, usage. Uh, a further, um, that would be 44.7% is informal, and then we have the self, you know, uh, that would actually be at about 6.2%. And basically, this is focusing on uh, the farmers in terms of uh, 
what is their main source of uh, livelihood, and again, disaggregated in those three levels in that case. So we have done that for all the counties, and uh, you'll also find that information useful. Of course, there'll be different counties, have different you know, uh, preference in terms of whether it is the formal or whether it is uh, the informal. Uh, in terms of uh, the MSMEs, I seem to be having a challenge with uh, the technology. Uh, if you look at the micro, small, and uh, medium enterprises, again, in terms of the main source of uh, you know, uh, their financing, we've also given uh, distribution of the same. I'll take an example like that of LAMU, that uh, gave about 42.7% of the MSMEs. Um, the main source is from formal sources. Uh, we also have the 7.8% in formal, but then we also have you know, some of them relying on self you know, sources rather than the formal or informal in this case. Uh, looking at the dimension of uh, quality, there are two aspects that uh, we are focusing on here. Uh, one of them would be the population that had heard about the CRB. And uh, interestingly, you overall, about 42.1% nationally of the population 18 plus are the ones who had heard about the Credit Reference Bureau. Uh, it was highest at Nairobi at uh, 69%, and the lowest at Wajia at uh, 3%. And uh, in total, if you look at the counties that we are aware about the CRB, below the national average, there are about 28 counties, meaning that we need actually to spread this information so that uh, probably everybody then gets informed. Um, looking at another aspect in terms of uh, the population that was aware about the cost of borrowing, um, on average, only 49.3%, that's below half the population, was aware about the costs of borrowing. Uh, Nairobi had the highest proportion at 70%, Ginwajia and uh, Bomet, Mandela, those counties had the lowest you know, awareness in this case. Uh, in total, 26 counties actually had you know, information about the cost of borrowing below the national average. And uh, you will probably be surprised that some of the counties that you'd expect that they are aware, I'll give an example, like Mulanga, uh, about 30.6% 30, 30 weren't aware. As much as um, you know, the financial access in a country like Mulanga was over 90%, in terms of like now the awareness here, in terms of the cost of borrowing, they are lanking very wrong. Kirinyaga, likewise, and uh, you will get that information. Uh, going to uh, the last kind of uh, dimension in terms of the impact, we were looking at the financial health, whereby there are close to like nine variables that uh, we are captured. But uh, in terms of uh, the financial health, on average, nationally, uh, the financial health stood at 17.1%. Uh, but uh, a county like, uh, is, what? is it West? No. This would be Transoia, registered the highest uh, you know, financial health at about 37%. So we have that uh, done that distribution, and you'll find all this information available in the report. But just looking at um, one other aspect in terms of the impact, like uh, the ability to Infest, uh, you'll find a county like Turkana, about 76.1, uh, these are indices. Uh, in terms of uh, it's easier to infest probably in Turkana than in some of those other uh, counties. There is actually that spread, and uh, I'm sure the uh, county council of governors and the county governments will also find this information very useful. So if you go through the report, you realize that uh, there are different aspects that we've uh, presented. One case is uh, Mombasa, as an example, just to give you an indication of what you know, you'll find. There are several you know, variables, uh, you know, a lot of information that we have given in terms of like um, 
the large size, the population, you'll find that information in the report. But one dimension would be like uh, access, Mombasa, about 89, 89 close to 90% uh, of the population, 18 years and above, they would actually gain their financial uh, information in terms of uh, from the formal. But again, we can see there is that slight disparity, about 90.9 .9 men and uh, the women at 88.7%. So for all the counties, we have provided this information. And again, by the different you know, levels of uh, gender. For instance, if you look at uh, the population that is excluded in Mombasa, uh, it's about 7.9% of that, you know, those adults aged 18 years and above, uh, of which 7.6 are uh, men and again 8.3 are uh, women. So there is that, you know, gender gap in those respective counties. If uh, we look at uh, the usage, um, it's dream to project. Uh, the population overall that uses the bank in Mombasa, that is both the banks and also the mobile banking, is about, or the mobile money, 56.1%. Um, and if we were to exclude, you know, the mobile money, you'd have that at uh, about that 5%. Uh, the proportion that uses the circles is about 9.3%, meaning that uh, it is low. Um, the population that uh, also uses financial services products from insurance is about that 48 So for every county, this kind of information is actually provided. Uh, looking at uh, the quality dimension, um, in terms of um, the financial literacy, uh, looking at the proportion of adults 18 plus who engage in betting, like within um, Mobasa County, you'd find that at about 17.8%. Uh, the people who default on loans, uh, well, we acknowledge that this might have been during the COVID period, uh, was quite high at 65.5%. But we find this information to be very useful. In terms of the challenges faced by farmers in Mobasa, as an example, uh, the proportion that had indicated that uh, they didn't you know, have finances was about 11.2%. Uh, uh, small large sizes, and uh, in a city like Mobasa, this would be expected, was about 34.5%. So for every county, you will find this distribution and I believe that uh, if there are to be any interventions or any products to be developed at the county level, uh, some of the challenges that have been highlighted would actually be very useful for the county-specific you know, interventions. Um, in terms of uh, the impact, there are several dimensions. I'll give like uh, that example of the ability to invest. We have uh, about 35.5% of the population that indicated you know, that they have that challenge in this case. In terms of coping with risks, a whole 24% uh, raised you know, concerns in that area. Uh, some indicated like could not raise lump sum in three days. That's about 15.4% uh, in this case. Uh, if I'm to go to the last slide, because you have the information, I'm sure you will find it very useful. It has already been mentioned that uh, you'll find the soft copy uh, in uh, our website, KNBS. Uh, you'll also find the same in the CBK website. That information is there. And I believe even FSD will also ensure that this information is actually available again. Uh, what conclusions can we draw from uh, the analysis that we have done? Uh, one, we have taken note that there are disparities in the financial inclusion across the counties. And uh, that's one area of intervention. Eh? And uh, it is not just you know, the difference in terms of uh, at the aggregated level, but uh, whether it is in terms of the people who are gaining either the formal or informal financial access, or probably at the gender level in terms of male, female, there are those disparities in this case. And we've also noted 
that there's that gap as uh, shown by you know one of the slides that I give uh, between the highest and the lowest uh, in terms of the inclusivity uh, across the counties and uh, it is therefore then necessary for us probably to think in terms of uh, coming up with the policies and programs to try and bridge the gap that exists either within the counties or then also across the counties. And uh, we believe that uh, with that county information that you know, we've just released, that uh, we'll be able to inform you know, consumer education at that level so that we can also develop products that uh, would actually ensure that uh, that financial inclusivity increases in uh, those respective counties. Thank you very much.